Hi, I'm Christine and Sarah, physical therapist since 1982, certified teacher of the Alexander Technique since 1990. Today, I'm going to show you one of the most potent tools taught by Alexander teachers called lie on books. Sometimes it's called the recovery position or constructive rest. We're going to cover the what and the why we lie on books. We're going to look at how to get up and down from the floor safely. We're going to look at how to get into the position. I'm going to show you how to determine the correct book height for you. And at the end, I'm going to show you some helpful procedures that I like to do when I'm in this position. Simply put, lying on books requires that you lie on a firm surface with your knees up and your head on a stack of books. From anywhere between five minutes, and yes, five minutes, you will benefit from five minutes up until 20 minutes. I usually do not recommend more than 20 minutes because I have fallen asleep on the books, gotten up and felt my pelvis clunk back together again. And I don't think that that's a good thing to do on a regular basis, especially if you have any ligamentous laxity or hypermobility. So what does lying on books do? First, it puts your body in the horizontal plane, which removes it from the compressive force of gravity. I call it a two-way opposition stretch or traction. The knees up helps elongate the low back in the direction of the feet. The head on a stack of books helps lengthen the neck in the direction upward towards the head. And the spine benefits from the decompression as it elongates. When you're in the upright position, your muscles have to do a lot of work just to hold you up. So lying on books gives your muscles an opportunity to release and relax. However, the leg muscles have to do a little work to hold your legs up. Now some people will say that the pressure on the back of the skull by the books, or the occiput, and the slight stretch upward helps facilitate what craniosacral therapists call a CV4 cranial release. What is that? Well, very simply put, blood and cerebral spinal fluid flow is enhanced. Lying in the books is also a great de-stressor. Now you might ask me, well couldn't I just lie down in bed? And I'd say lying down in bed is good. And there is a time and a place for everything. If you were in a hotel or in a hospital, you wouldn't want to lie on the floor. I myself was in a hospital many years ago and I was getting a very tight neck and I took that stack of books and put them under my head in the bed and I'm going to tell you it did the trick. However, lying on a firm surface like the floor creates pressure at the sacrum, more pressure in the middle of the back, and the pressure of the books on the occiput elongates the spine more effectively than lying on a soft surface. So let's go see how to get onto the floor. So there are many ways to get down to the floor. You should do what you feel safe doing for your balance and for your back, hip, and knees. If you have any balance issues, you can use a stable piece of furniture, stand in front of it, and go into what I call the bear squat. If you feel secure without the furniture, you can go into the bear squat directly. And at this point, you have to make a decision of how you get down 
to the floor. Now, if you have no back issues, you could very easily just sit on your hip, roll, and you would be in place. So if you have any issues with your back and you don't want to twist it, you can just come walking back with your knees, lie on your belly, and from here, roll like a log, and you can be on the books like this, if your back is a little painful, or come up into the sitting on sit bones, tall position. Then there's the half kneel method of getting onto the floor. You need happy knees, however. You stand to the side of the books, take one leg back, onto one knee, then the other. Here again, you have the choice of going onto your hip or lying on your belly and rolling over into position. This last method I'm going to show you is more of an elegant Feldenkrais based movement to the floor. You need good motion in your back, comfortable hips and knees to do it, however. So you're going to face the books, put your hands a little bit to the side, you're going to bend down to the floor and just swivel. And now you're in position. Okay, so before you got down to the floor, you would have grabbed a stack of books. This is a two inch stack. And you would have placed it somewhere where you think you're going to land and not worry too much because we can always readjust. I prefer to start sitting squarely on the sitting bones. If your back does not like this, you can roll directly onto the books, but I prefer this because most people will get a better symmetrical lengthening of the spine. So now I put the hands flat and I slide back onto my elbows. And the books are not quite right, so I'm going to make sure that they are not touching my neck. They are not below the hairline. Then I'm going to bring my knees into a more of a bend, but not too much of a bend. This would be too much of a bend, just an easy bend. I'll show you next how to arrange the feet and knees with my shoes off. Knees forward and away. Now I'm going to let you see a close-up of the feet. So my knees are pointed slightly forward and away. And I want my feet to be directly under my knees so that the weight is borne on the outside edge and the inside edge of my feet equally. Scoogey this one over a little bit. If my legs are too far apart, I'm going to be on the outside edges. If my knees are too far in, I'm going to be on the inside edges. If my feet are too far apart, I'm going to bear weight on the inside edges. If my feet are too close, I'm going to be holding with a lot of tension in the inner thigh, and, and the weight will be on my outside edges of feet. So squarely weight borne across the full foot. So let's look at the right book height for you in more detail. Now let me say this, there is no goal. You're not working towards using more books or using less books. It really has to do with a number of things. First of all, the depth of your chest to the back of your back and the amount of curve that you have in your neck. That's one factor. 
The other factor is, is that the book height may vary depending on how tight your neck and back are on a given day. And thirdly, it may vary depending on what surface you're lying on. If you're lying on a very firm surface, you will need possibly a little more height on the books than you would if you were on a soft surface because you sink down into the softer surface and need less. So I like to use the digest type of books because they are all about a quarter of an inch and give you more adjustability in testing and at the end sometimes it's important to take out a book and restore the spring to your neck. So if you don't have these kind of books, you can use a larger book and flip pages to determine your book height. Now, what we're looking for is this. We are looking to have the neck just a little higher than the line of the spine to give it just a little bit of stretch. But we don't want it too taut. So let's give it a go. Now we threw a bunch of books here. Again, they're not touching my neck. And I would say that these are probably a little too high for me, but um, what we're going to do is start with no books and add as we go up. Now what you see is my forehead much lower than my chin. So my neck and head are definitely too low. I'm going to add a book one at a time. And that's definitely better than no books, but how about two books? About a half an inch or two quarter inch books is about the lowest most people need but it could still be better. Sort of like the eye doctor. Is this better? Is that better? So we'll just keep going up. Now three is definitely nicer than two. But we'll go up again. And I feel a little stretch on my neck, but I feel very good in here. So I'm gonna go up again. And for me, that still feels pretty good. Now this is the point, and I don't know if it, you can see it visually, but I'm starting to feel a little tension in the throat. And if I went up one more book, I would definitely feel a very serious pressure here. And I think that's the point at which you say, we're going to go down a book. And then you ask yourself, okay. Is this better? Or this better? And that's where it's up to the person. If I want a little more stretch, I could be happy with it here to start. And if I push the book away a little bit this way, I'll get a little stretch. And after about 10 minutes of lying on the books, the spine begins to relax and flatten a little bit. And that's when pressure builds up a little bit on the back of your head and a little bit in your throat. And I can feel now that this is not quite as comfortable. So I think that this is where I'm going to start. So within a quarter of an inch, you've got a little leeway, and that's why I, I always write plus or minus how many inches of books. 
So I ended up deciding on an inch and a half of books on this surface. Now, what if you had a bulging disc that was a little swollen? Uh, you might need actually a little more height so that the disc isn't pinched, but you'll know. You'll test it and you'll see if you tolerate it. On the other hand, there are people who get into this position and they feel uncomfortable in the lower neck and I take a small towel roll and give the lower neck just a little support which is an option. Now, I had an Alexander teacher tell me that she worked with an asthma student and that that asthma student felt that putting a few more inches of books under her head actually gave her greater relief from neck tension and chest tightness. So I have no experience directly with it, but you may try that if you are an asthma sufferer. Now what if being in this position is a strain on your low back? Let's look at that. So I've set my legs up on two pillows with my knees a little bent and rolled out to the side. And that takes a lot of the tension out of my back. So if you need to lie on books and the knees up position is not comfortable, you can put them on pillows and you may want to experiment with how high you go and how comfortable you feel. However, for sleeping, I do not advise long-term to sleep with pillows underneath your knees. And the reason is, is that the hip flexors, which come across the front of the hips, are in a shortened position overnight. And they will tighten over time, and it will make it more difficult for you to stand up straight. So, you lay on the books, then what? Well, if you're really tired, you can just rest. Or you could be more active in engaging an expansion of yourself and your awareness. In Alexander Training, we learned by playing games, which were basically procedures designed to teach us, and we were encouraged to come up with our own ideas. So some of the things I'm going to show you are things I've come up with and some things that have been taught to me. Okay, let's get going. So at minimum, you could do some kind of mindful breathing while lying on the books. My favorite is Dr. Andrew Wiles' 478 breathing. And I love it because within one minute, you can balance your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. You can watch him do it on YouTube yourself if you wish. Now, he suggests doing four rounds of this breathing. Why don't we do it together? And you'll hear how I count, not how many seconds I do it for. So first thing is exhale out forcibly. In for four. Hold for seven. Out forcibly for eight. Repeat. In. Hold. Out. In. Hold. Out. In. Hold. Out. Point. You're breathing in through the nostril. You are blowing out through the mouth with a audible huff. 
So his recommendation is for the first month to practice this twice a day, four rounds, and maybe after a month, you can go up to eight rounds at a time. And if you wish to do it more than twice a day, he feels that that would be helpful. This next one is what I call eye toe clouds. And it is very gentle and it involves thinking and breathing. So I start with one leg down and I think about myself from my right eye as I breathe all the way down to my big toe. And I can think of myself up from my big toe all the way back up to my eye. And as I do that, I think about white fluffy clouds expanding my whole right side. So systematically, I'm going up through my whole body, my arm, up to my head, and thinking about white fluffy clouds. And if I do just a quick check and I close my eyes, I can feel that my whole right side is round, more round and fluffier, and my left side it feels a little dense and flatter. So I've done something good to expand myself, even though it's just been thinking and breathing. So I go over to the left side and I do the same thing, thinking of my left eye all the way down through to my left big toe with breath and the thought of fluffy clouds And one other helpful idea is to think that the fluffy clouds from the right are now shifting and joining these fluffy clouds on the left. And you might have seen me move my arm out, but, but by breathing and thinking of this expansion, I wanted to move my arms out just a little bit. And in a very short time, both sides equalize and you feel expanded. There you have it, a very gentle procedure. The next one I call the eagle arms, and it's preferable to do it on the bed when your arms can be supported fully, or on the floor. Unfortunately, I'm on a table, but we start in position one with the hands together coming up directly from the chest. You move the hands apart, thinking about the width across your chest. And at the end of every position, you re-release your neck. Position number three. Thinking of widening across your chest and now starting to think about your fingertips moving away from your body ever so slightly. Re-release your neck. Fourth position, you're letting your chest open. Fingers thinking now just to the sides and away. 
re-release your neck, and then lower your arms to the supportive surface, thinking of widening across your chest from fingertip to fingertip, re-release your neck, and then bend your elbows and return your arms. Do not leave your arms out to the side very long because it will create a strain and you might feel a little nerve stretch. So the next one I'm going to show you is called Tilling the Soil. And it was taught to me by my teacher, Jean Clark. We start by putting one leg down. And it's a very gentle procedure in which you move the ankle up and down slowly. And that motion tills the soil. And what you do is you put your attention into your lower leg and breathe and just feel the motion loosening and expanding the muscles of the lower leg. Then move up to the upper leg and do the same. Feel the motion traveling up and breathing. Then you work the lower back and you feel how that motion continues to travel as you loosen and breathe into your low back. Then your upper back. Then up into your neck. Now obviously the motion is greater in your ankle, but you can still feel the gentle undulation in your neck and you can loosen your neck. Now you do the same thing with your right leg and work the right side of your body again. Lower leg, upper leg, low back, upper back, neck and head. So the next one is called the bounce. It's a very active activity and definitely you would probably not do this if you had acute pain or injury. But let's say that it really has helped me at the end of the night after I've had a very long day and my back might be talking to me a one or a two out of ten discomfort and it just makes me feel a lot better. It's sort of something that I derived from Jean Clark's Tilling the Soil. So you put one leg down and the emphasis on the pulsation is on the downward motion so that it's pulling your spine and then when you bring your foot up it's just a recovery so i'm going to show you now and you you don't have to do it any amount of time just till you feel happy and breathe I'm happy. Then I switch sides. Readjust my books. Do it on the other side. Readjust my books. And I can do it with both legs down. Or not, if it's too vigorous for you. And it just springs the whole spine like you were on a trampoline. All right, I'm coming off my books and I'm happy and done. So this next one is called the Tip Hip 
lift. And I've got a separate video detailing it, but I'm going to show it to you briefly here, and it's about elongating the whole spine in the down towards the foot direction. It's not about cranking the legs hard to one side, and you don't have to lift up very high for it to be effective. So you're going to tip the legs, keeping them 8 to 10 inches apart, and then you're going to lift the hip in the direction of the knee. Let the ribs expand as you breathe in. And then exhale as you come down. Again, you're going to tip, lift the hip, breathe. And I do it back and forth three to five times. You're going to get a second shot and view of this as well. Tip, hip, lift. Breathing. Exhale. Tip, hip, lift. Breathing in. Exhale. Exhale. So this next one I call the sacral tap. And it's not for everyone. People with acute pain or injury or even moderate to severe sacroiliac joint arthritis probably should not try this. It's best done on a firm floor because what we're going to do is we're going to tap the sacrum and on a soft surface you don't really get uh, a nice tapping. So it's pretty simple. I tap five to ten times and then I stop and then I do a few more. So here we go. I'm going to lift and drop my pelvis so that the sacrum taps on the surface of the table. Let me do it again. I'd say you could do it anywhere between three and five times. And what, what, it, what it does for me is it, it gets a sense that the sacrum is not so tight in its position between the two halves of the pelvis. So again, we're not banging hard and we're tapping it to tolerance. So the last one I call the baby tantrum. Now, I'm assuming most of you have had a tantrum before, but it might take you a little while to remember how that goes. I'm going to show you with the legs first so that you get the rhythm of it. And then I'm going to add the arms and then I'm going to add the head. Now you really do have to have your shoes off for this because you need to slip and slide. I'm going to put my legs down. And I'm going to keep the legs low to the bed or table or floor. And I'm going to bend the knees in such a way that the hips rock from side to side. So here we go. This is the motion we're looking for. Out to the side. And that feels so good on the pelvis and the legs. And I'm going to add the arms to the tantrum. You can see each shoulder is coming off as I push on the elbow. And then I'm going to add the head. So you want to breathe and slosh yourself around. There we go, the baby tantrum. I'm going to show it to you from a different view next. 
Okay, here's the baby tantrum from a different viewpoint. Legs down. Arms. Head. Clearly not something you want to do if you have acute pain or injury. So getting up from the floor is basically just reversing the way we got down. So let's just do a very quick review. If you are going to roll onto the books, you can roll off of the books. Come up to the hands and knee position. If you need furniture, I suggest going to the end of the sofa or a sturdy table because this is easier to grab and then coming up. You can roll with your knees up. Without the couch, using the bear squat. Without the sofa, using the half kneel. The Feldenkrais Spiral. Cross your foot in the direction you're turning. Hands ready to be on the floor. Spiral upward. Walk your hands. And stand. So there you have it, lying on books, another tool in your self-help toolbox. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe, like it, leave any comments or questions. Until next time.